Will this be the end of bacon in California? A new law requires more living space for pig, but it could have unintended consequences. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. There are some things that people just can't ever seem to get enough of, besides Chris Chappell. I'm of course talking about bacon. Everyone loves bacon, except vegans. And even then, some vegans crave it so much, they choke down this nasty stuff. But I have some bad news for you. If you live in California, soon you might not be able to afford bacon. That's thanks to a law passed in 2018. It's called Proposition 12. At the start of the next year, the Golden State will begin enforcing an animal welfare proposition, Prop 12, requiring more space for breeding livestock and pork producers across the country won't be able to sell in California if they don't meet the state's strict new standards. Proposition 12 applies to breeding pigs, egg-laying chickens, and veal calves. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply to the Millions of Californians treated like livestock every day on their three-hour commute to work. Proposition 12 builds on an earlier law called Proposition 2, developed by the Humane Society of the United States. It's a pro-animal advocacy group. Remember the Humane Society because it'll come back later. The new law states business owners cannot knowingly buy or sell meat from an animal that was confined in a cruel manner. What's considered a cruel manner? Well, instead of a pig being confined to a 20 square foot area, it goes up to 24 square feet. I know that doesn't sound like a big difference to you, but for a pig, it also isn't that big of a difference. But for many pork producers, it's a huge difference. It could force them to rebuild a lot of their facilities or get rid of so many pigs that it's no longer profitable. Only about 4% of pork producers say they can comply with the rules. I reached out to a pig for comment, but he declined to answer. Probably because he saw I was eating a BLT at the time. Now what's different about Proposition 12 from other animal welfare laws is state enforcement. Violations can be punished with a fine of up to $1,000 and or six months in jail. If that sounds inhumane, don't worry the jail cells are at least 24 square feet. People have already been talking about a California exodus. And now, if you can't even get bacon in California, I could see a lot more people ready to move out. Although for this exodus to occur, it would take a bigger miracle than parting the Red Sea, parting the 405 freeway. But if you think Proposition 12 will affect just California, you're wrong. This could affect the entire country. I'll explain more after the break. Welcome back. California's new animal welfare law is going to have a huge impact on what you can put on your plate. That's right, even if you don't live in California. You see, Californians eat a lot of pork. They consume roughly 15% of all pork produced in the entire country. But California doesn't produce enough pork to meet the demand. According to Rabobank, a global food and agriculture financial services company, California's restaurants and groceries use about 255 million pounds of pork a month, but its farms produce only 45 million pounds. That's why California relies on imports, especially from Midwestern states like Iowa. This is much better than the Midwest's other primary export to California, untalented actors. But as I said, the problem is only 4% of pork producers nationwide say they can comply with California's new rules. And the new rules apply to all pork sold in California, regardless of where the pigs were raised. So if pork producers in other states want to sell in California, they'd have to change their facilities in order to comply. You have significant costs to come into compliance with what Prop 12 requires, and some of them just won't be able to do it, uh, and they'll be forced out of business. California, a huge market for pork, will suddenly be off the table for many of them. California's gotten so good at destroying businesses, they're now doing it in other states. 
And even for pork producers who can afford to comply with the California law, they might still have problems. Pork producers say besides the cost, they haven't complied with the new law because California hasn't yet issued formal regulations on how the new standards will be administered and enforced. Maybe they should just go by the honor system. That worked out so well when California let everyone unmask for a month. There are also some logistical challenges. Processors will need to design new systems to track California-compliant hogs and separate those premium cuts from standard pork that can serve the rest of the country. Is it just me or does that make California seem more sadistic? Oh, I only want to eat pigs that lead a great life. They taste so much better when they have something to lose. But even if the bureaucracy and logistics problems were resolved, there are still some legal questions. It should come as no surprise that major meat lobbying groups are against Proposition 12. They argue Proposition 12 violates the Interstate Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution. It's a clause that says Congress has the power to regulate commerce among states. According to the critics, Proposition 12 is a substantial barrier to interstate commerce because out-of-state producers must submit to California's mandated production methods or lose access to California's large market. But the lawsuits against Proposition 12 lost in the U.S. District Court for Central California and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. The court said the pork ban doesn't violate the Interstate Commerce Clause because it neither targets solely interstate commerce nor directly dictates prices. Critics filed a petition for the Supreme Court to review California's law. It got denied. So it looks like the law won't be overturned anytime soon. And this story will be adapted in the next Babe movie, Babe. Pig in the slightly larger confinement area. That'll do, pig. That'll do. But while the new law is slightly better for pigs, it's a lot worse for many people. I'll explain more after the break. Welcome back. California's Proposition 12 will raise costs for pig farmers. One economist at North Carolina State University estimated the extra costs at 15% more per animal for a farm with a thousand breeding pigs. So a lot of pig farmers will simply stop supplying pork to California. According to one consulting firm, if half the pork supply was suddenly lost in California, bacon prices would jump 60%, meaning a $6 package would rise to about $9.60. And another expert says even a 50% pork price increase based on the implementation of Proposition 12 could lead to a consumer loss upwards over $225 million annually in just Los Angeles. That means consumers in LA would pay $225 million more for pork. That's money they would not be able to use to pay for other things, like liposuction, which they'll need after years of eating too much pork. And while the wealthy are happy to pay a few extra bucks for their organic, free-range, artisanal sliced pork belly, most people who are living paycheck to paycheck just won't be able to afford bacon after the law goes into effect. This ham-fisted law has pork chopped their ability to bring home the bacon. They pulled pork right out of their budget. You gotta be ribbing me. Chorizo. But animal advocates, including the Humane Society, say the high cost of bacon is exactly what they want. Can you imagine enduring years on end on a concrete floor, locked behind metal bars, only inches from your nose? But things are starting to change. The Humane Society of the United States and other animal protection organizations are racking up major advancements in the quest for better treatment of pigs. Pigs are intelligent, social animals who want to enjoy their lives every bit as much as our dogs and cats at home do. They deserve much more than a life inside a tiny crate. I don't know, my buddy Dave is a huge pig, and he seems happy alone inside his 8x8 studio apartment. Of course, the animal advocate statements are a bit misleading. These are actually gestation crates, which are used for a few months to keep animals isolated while they're pregnant. Gestation crates have already been outlawed in California, as well as several other states. In fact, the first state to ban them was Florida. Go Florida? Major pork producers like Smithfield 
have also pledged to phase out gestation crates. But for the rest of the pigs' lives, they live in confinement areas of at least 20 square feet. With the new law, it goes up to 24 square feet. Why stop there? While they're at it, why don't they also get the pigs free Wi-Fi, mud jacuzzis, and a free subscription to Amazon Swine? But the Humane Society and other proponents of Proposition 12 want to do more than just improve animal confinement. Our goal is to get to 50% of the menu being all plant-based by 2025. Uh, the menu is already 100% plant-based since the menu is made of paper? Joking aside, it sounds to me like it's not just about humane conditions for farm animals, but also forcing people to change what they eat and move towards veganism, which will be a disaster for my meat-based cookie company. But the new law will especially hurt the Hispanic and Asian communities in California. A lot of their dishes include pork, and pork may soon be unaffordable for many working-class families. The pork price increase could also hurt a lot of small restaurants that specialize in those kinds of dishes. So the question I'm asking now is, where's the beef? So what do you think? Are you willing to forgo carnitas in your tacos? Leave your comments below. And if you like getting your news outside the mainstream media, please support our work with as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. It's much cheaper than California bacon, and I'm as much of a ham. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.